awesome team, simply Oh, like here. And today we have an epic opening video. It's the Yu-Gi-Oh! Millennium Items! And then I want to ask you guys to check out my channel and subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! And other epic opening videos. Alright, so for this video, you guys will be doing it in two parts. For the first part, we're going to go over the origin story of the Millennium Items and their different abilities and who possess them. And then for the second part, we're going to go over uh, Pharaoh Atem, or Yami Yugi's story with the Millennium Items. And also, you guys, forgive me if I mispronounce any names, especially if you're an Egyptian pharaoh. Do not seal my soul in anything. All right, you guys, so for the origin story, with Egypt under threat from invading armies 3,000 years ago, Pharaoh Aknam Khanan sought to protect his land through mystical means and laid down the command for seven magical items to be forged based on an ancient spell found in the Millennium Spellbook. Aknam Khanan's brother, Aknadin, was charged with creating the items, but Aknadin refrained from informing his brother that in order to do so, 99 human sacrifices were required. That's insane. The village of Kul Elna became the victim, and Akhnadin had them all slaughtered, and their blood, bone, and flesh were melted with the gold and cast to create the mystic rite that formed the items. So that's how the different Millennium items were created. Then with Akhnam Khanan possessing the Millennium Puzzle, the remaining six items were entrusted to his high priests, the Sacred Guardians. And uh, using the items, the Millennium Items combined power, an army of dual monsters were summoned and repelled the invading forces of, G of Egypt. However, upon discovering the dark truth behind the Millennium Items creation, Aknam Khanan attempted to atone by offering his soul up to the Egyptian gods as penance, sparing his son, Pharaoh Atem, Yami Yugi, from any future retribution from his own indirect actions. So that is the origin story, you guys, behind the different Millennium Items. I know it's pretty, pretty insane. Um, so let's pop this open though and check out the Millennium Items. And thanks to our friends at Old Pro, we have this beautiful uh, soft touch playmat here. All right, so here we go. <laughs> Very awesome. Um, you can see they have like a gold look to them. Very cool. They all pretty much look, you know, kind of like the different Millennium Items. The the eyes got a cool little ruby for it. <laughs> But yeah, so for the Millennium Puzzle, you guys, the Egyptian uh, people who had it were Akdam Khanan, along with Atem and uh, his priest Seto. So those, those. And then the recent people, so for present, uh, we have Solomon Muto and then Yugi, Yami Yugi and Yugi or the Yugis. And the powers of the Millennium Puzzle, you guys, are it contains the soul of Pharaoh Atem, summons and controls dual monsters, including the Egyptian gods. And uh, grants the one who solves it the intelligence and power of the darkness. So, that is the Millennium Puzzle. And for the Millennium Eye, so we have Akhnadin, which is, you know, uh, the Pharaoh or uh, Akhnam Khanan's brother. And uh, that's for the Egyptian possessor. And then for the present, we have Maximilian Pegasus, uh, the different Bakuras, and uh, the different Yugis. Millennium Eye. It reads minds and looks into a person's soul. That's its ability. Very cool. And then for the Millennium Ring. Take this out here. This is pretty. It's nice. So for the Millennium Ring, um, I believe Karim or Kalim uh, was the one of the different priests. And so one of the sacred guardians that had the Millennium Ring. And then Thief King Bakura. Um, also, Mana and Zork uh, Nephra, Nef, Necrophades, so from the old Egyptian. And then more present, um, you have the Bakuras, and then you have the Mariks, and then you have the Yugis. And the power of the Millennium Ring, you guys, was it allows its owner to find whatever he seeks, acting like a compass. It also contains the soul of Zork and Thief King Bakura. Very cool. Remember, Thief King Bakura was one of the, the only surviving member of the clan that was sacrificed in order to create the Millennium Items. So that's the Millennium Ring. And then the Millennium Scale, scale um, was Kalim from Egypt. We have Kalim and then Atem and Thief King Bakura all had the Millennium Scale. And the Millennium Scale, you guys, ooh, if I can get it out of here. So for the Millennium Scale, the present holders were Shadi and then the Yugis. And it judges people's souls 
And then also in ancient Egypt, it had the power to fuse monsters. So that's the Millennium Scale. And then for the Millennium Rod, we have, uh, from ancient Egypt, we have Priest Seto. And then more, oh wow, this thing is freaking awesome. Wow. Um, and then for the present, we have, you know, Merrick, the Merricks, and then uh, Yugi's. And the power of the Millennium Rod is mind control. And then for ancient Egypt, it could seal spirit monsters inside of stone tablets. That is very sweet. I kind of just want to... Boom. <laughs> but yes, and then uh, the final item here, we have um, the necklace, the Millennium Necklace. So this is pretty cool. Um, it is, for ancient Egypt, it was Isis who had control of this. One of the sacred guardians. And uh, for the present, it's the Ishizu Ishtar and then uh, the Yugis. And it sees into the past, present, or sees into the past and the future. The Millennium Necklace. Very awesome. So that's the different Millennium items. As you guys can see here. Very awesome. Very cool. And post in the comments below, what's your favorite Millennium item and what would you do with it? <laughs> so for the second part of this video, we're going to go over uh, the, some other abilities that the Millennium items offer and then just other items that were associated with the Millennium items. And then we're going to go over the story of the Pharaoh. Items that were associated with the Millennium items, you have the Spellbook, the Millennium Spellbook, um, the Feather of Ma'at, and uh, that's used by the Pharaoh's priest to judge the hearts of criminals. And it's also used um, in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, I believe, uh, with the Tricodian Wing Kribo. And Mott is actually a Yu-Gi-Oh! card. And uh, yes, he looks pretty freaking awesome. And then we also have the Pyramid of Light, which contains Anubis' soul. And as, resembles the Millennium Puzzle. And then the Millennium Shield, which is uh, probably referring to a real item. So that's pretty cool. And then other abilities you guys, the Millennium Items can offer are uh, the power of shadow games, giving them access to an ancient magic and most standard are granting a wish when being acquired or materializing dual monsters to command and communicating with spirits. Um, casting penalty games on a loser of a shadow game. And uh, when a shadow game starts using the magic of the items, the player would send themselves into an alternate dimension, the shadow realm, and uh, where the duel would not be interrupted and where cheating is for forbidden punishable by death. Outside of the game, in um, addition to their other unique abilities, um, the items offer the owners to harness dark magic that they can conveniently call for um, many purposes. The power of the Millennium Items let the holders perform feats like erasing memories, putting people to sleep, cloaking themselves, and interfering with the other powers of Millennium Items. And they also give their owners protection from harm from other magic, including Millennium Items. So, that's pretty interesting. Just some other extra abilities there. Alright, so for the story behind Pharaoh Atum, um, he was given the Millennium Puzzle by when his father died, and the Millennium Rod was given to a young priest named Seto, uh, who was actually Akhenaten's son, and Seto became a strong friend of Atem, though both, both of them remained unaware that they were cousins, because uh, you know their, their fathers were brothers. So from there, Thief King Bakura, obviously the sole survivor of the Kul Elna clan, um, he stole the Holy Didac from the tomb of Akhenaten, Kanan, and he used that to summon random evil spirits, and he failed to beat Atem, though, and he defeated Mahad and acquired the Millennium Ring, and then used the Millennium Ring, though, to inject evil thoughts into Akhenaten's Millennium Eye to corrupt his mind. Akhenaten, so that is the son, or the father of Seto, and, you know, the uncle of uh, Atem, or Yami Yugi, he wanted his son Seto to become the new pharaoh. So he helped Bakura defeat other priests and Atem, and he placed the Millennium Items upon the stone slab to summon the dark god Zork. And then while Zork attempted to decimate the planet, Atem used his own name and magics of the Shadow Games within the Millennium Items to seal Zork uh, within the Millennium Ring and his own soul in the Millennium Puzzle, wiping his memory so that he could not recall it, so that, bringing, so that the binding might may never be undone. And then with the Thames' eventual death, the Millennium Puzzle was entombed along with it in a crypt in the Valley of the Kings, a chamber beneath the village of Kul Elna. And its uh, stone rested in red. Uh, should the seven Millennium Items be placed upon it along with the eighth key, 
the Pharaoh's name, um, Zork would be free again. And moving towards the present, you guys, that's kind of when the Shadow Games were unleashed, when the Millennium Puzzle was solved by Yugi Moto, and that's when the Yu-Gi-Oh! series started. And uh, it's just it's just freaking awesome, the story behind the Millennium Items and just the whole classic uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! setting and storyline. It's pretty sweet, so... Hopefully you guys enjoyed this opening and kind of review of the story but behind the Millennium Items. And uh, yeah, it makes me want to go watch the classic Yu-Gi-Oh! all over again. So once again, YouTube, thanks for watching. And remember to subscribe for more epic Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. And simply, oh, lucky, signing out. Oh, snipe, he's Batman!